Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Pixel website to create some awesome artwork. So let's go ahead and open up the web browser and we're going to go to this website called Pixel. So that's P-I-X-L-R.com. I'll put a link to this in the description. So if you check the description, you'll find a link directly to this website. To show you how to use this website, I need to download a few images. So I'm going to download this one from Unsplash. I'll put a link to this picture in the uh, description as well. And we're going to go to Pixabay. And we're going to download this picture as well. So I'll click free download. I want to download at 1920 resolution. This one right here, the third one down and click download. We can tick this option and then click download again. And we'll have that picture as well. So we've got two pictures. I've got a folder on my desktop. And I just want to drag and drop these two pictures into this folder. So you'll find both these images in the description, links to them, and also a link to this website. So let's go to this website and we're going to click on this top option here, try photo editor, Pixel X. This one's basically all web browser based. So we'll click this one and we'll be presented with this screen. So it's a bit like Photoshop or GIMP or any other type of image manipulation software. There's a bit of a difference in this one. You can go and search for stock images. You can create a new blank canvas, or you can go ahead and click open here and start with a, an image to work with. So let's click open. And when we click open, we're going to select the picture of this lady, right? And we'll click open. Now it's saying to me that the image is quite large. So you want to pick like a default sort of style. And we're going to click this middle one, full HD, 1920. And we'll click apply. So here we've got the picture of the lady and I'm going to press the F11 key on my keyboard. F11 allows me to go into full screen so I can get rid of the interface and now we just see the software on its own. And it's called a background image here as default. So when we click on that image, we can go to uh, the properties. Let's see, now the properties here allow me to change the canvas, right? So you can click canvas size and change the actual size of the canvas here. You can rotate the canvas. So you're not really rotating the image itself, you're rotating the canvas, yeah? And what we want to do, first of all, let's see. We want to we want to add another picture. So let's click the plus sign. And when we click the plus sign, we're going to click image again. And this time we'll select the background and click open. And as default, that background image will be placed above. So these are layer stacks. You can see layer stacks here. Two different layers. So we want to click on this top layer. In fact, we want to click on the bottom layer this background one with the lady and we're going to click on this tool is the arrange tool let's click on this one and we'll click on that layer here back where it's relabeled background and we're going to unlock it because at the moment it's got a little padlock in the corner can you see locked background let's unlock it and now we can take this background this is actually the background that we want and drag it below so what we want to do now is we can use this tool to zoom in and out here, right? So this is a nice little easy tool for us to zoom in and out. So we just want to zoom out a little bit, maybe to around, uh, let's say around 50% or 40%, somewhere around here. And we're going to click on this layer here, this top layer. And there's two ways to do this. Um, we can click on the layer settings here. And when we click on that, we can click on this drop down and select the option from here, what we want to select, or we can click on the actual layer, go to the arrange, arrange tool here, and we can also select the blend mode from here as well. So it's up to you, you can either do it from the layer here, or you can do it from this option here, arrange, and then select the blend mode. In this blend mode, I'm gonna click on the drop down, and I'm gonna select screen. When I select screen, you can see like this halo sort of shape, right? So if I were to hide this layer, I can hide it by clicking visible here. You can see the background behind. And this, um, screen option will allow that to get shown through like some of the highlights and colors so what i want to do now is really resize this background so i'm going to click on the background layer here this one here and i'm going to use the uh, handles on the side to increase the size of it just by a little bit and i want to drag it so that it kind of surrounds the person right in the middle so if you drag it you'll snap it right in the middle you see this vertical line up here that means it's snapped right on the center and we want it to be maybe a little bit bigger, I think. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And something around here should be good, around this position. Right around, let's see, somewhere around here. So this is down to your own preference. I'm just going to zoom back in. And you can kind of see what's going on now. So we've got this transparency, right? We've got this background and we set it to screen. You can set it to other options here and experiment and see what they do but we want to leave it on screen. 
So let's click on this top layer. It's called background. Let's just try and see. Let's edit. Um, it would be nice if we could rename that layer somehow. Let's see if we can do that somehow. Don't think I see any way. Um, let's see. I can't find any way to rename the layer, but it doesn't matter too much, to be fair. We, we understand that this is not really a background. It's the foreground, right? It's the main image, and this is actually the background below. So let's click on that top layer. And we'll close this, the Arrange tool. And what we'll do is go to, there's quite a few different options here. You can crop images, you can cut around images. I want to just do an experiment with this tool right now today. And I'm going to look at other options of how you can manipulate images using this particular tool. I'm going to go for a certain type of style and effect. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more to around here. And I'm going to click on the top layer, with the, la the picture of the lady. And I'm going to go to Adjust. And when I go to adjust, let's zoom out a little bit here. And the vibrancy. So let's increase the vibrancy. So if I set it all the way down, it's almost like almost grayscale. It's not quite grayscale. You, if you wanted to make it grayscale, you can just turn on black and white. But remember, it's just the top layer that you're manipulating, not the image behind it, not this background. So we can make this sort of black and white and have this sort of colored halo around it, which is quite a nice effect. But it's not what I want. You can invert it and you get this sort of sci-fi sort of style, but I don't really want that either. So I want to increase the vibrancy, I just want to give it a bit more color. Um, if you change the color and you don't like it, it's too like too vibrant, you can click here and you can hover over the word vibrancy and reset it, right? But I want to drag it up a little bit. I want to bring up the saturation, bring a bit more color to it. The temperature, if we move it to the, to the right, it's going to add more sort of red warm colors. And if we move it to the left, it's going to be more cold colors. Now, if you look at the image, she's wearing blue jeans, she's got blue eyes. So if I move it towards the left side, we're going to get more of a sort of blue tint or blue temperature. And that's what I really want because it's kind of the, you know, some sort of synergy in the color scheme, let's say. The hue and the saturation, you know, I'm not really going to do anything with this. But if you're, if you're experimenting, you want to make some nice sort of stylized artwork, something a bit different. Um, then you can use this tool, right? You can get some pretty interesting effects. Uh, but I'm going to click, I'm going to go back over to Hue and click Reset. I want to reset it. Here you've got the brightness. Really, I don't want to do too much with the brightness. I just want to bring it up maybe slightly, just a little bit, just like four. Uh, the exposure, I'm going to leave that actually alone. Don't really want to do anything with exposure. So I'm going to click Reset. Contrast here, so you can play around with the contrast brighten it really quite a lot of contrast but we we'll leave these we we'll reset them I'm just showing you what they do is you can darken the image with blacks you can make the blacks more black basically um and you can make the whites more white but we we'll reset all of those highlights again um this particular image is hard to hard to see that working because it's it's a full canvas image if this was a png file you maybe see that a bit better we'll click reset you can play around with the shadows as well you can darken it down you can see how like there's like shadows in here but you can still see the hair you can darken them down and brighten them up but we're going to leave most of these um this is like toning and you've got fill options as well and you've got curves here you can play around with rgb curves so i'm going to leave most of this this is what i'm pretty much happy with so i'm going to go ahead and click apply and then we move down to the next tool so the first one was adjust just adjusting the image colors um and now we're going to go to filters and inside filters, here, if I were to zoom in on this image, let's zoom in quite close around here, um, I can increase the sharpness. So if I increase it quite a lot, it's going to pixelate. It's not really a pixelate, but you're going to get this sort of grainy image. But here it's a little bit blurred out, so I just want to sharpen it a little bit, just to give a bit more of a sharper edge. The clarity, here you can play around with the clarity settings. I think, um, let's just see. Sometimes it's worth zooming out a little bit just so you can see the image a bit more clearly. And let's see. I think we'll bring this up just slightly. And then you can smooth out the edges as well. So we'll move this up a little bit as well. Then you can add blur effects. You can add blur to this image. Really, if this background we were to blur it, it would make more sense rather than the foreground. So you might want to blur out the background but keep the foreground uh, you know, sharp something like this i think is good don't really want to add grain to the image but if you want that sort of effect you can have sort of grain in the image um this image here this this particular option this is like to do with this scene right so i'm going to increase this i want to bring like this sort of layer mask around the edge you can see 
now we're showing through some of those stars in the background if I move it all the way to this side you won't really see that but as I drag it in we're going to get more of this sort of shape so I want to push it around 90% so we get more of this um, background showing through making it quite interesting image now the fringe as well this one here you can kind of get this sort of coloration I don't know if this is really what I want but you can experiment with it and if you don't like something just drag it I don't really like that so you just click on the word fringe and it will reset so I'm not really going to use that option dehaze um, maybe we'll bring this in slightly just slightly a little bit maybe around 20 just to get rid of some of this sort of white the bloom this will just increase and this really like a bloom from the center point of this image so it's like a like a bloom effect right you can do it too much I think it's just overkill but we want to brighten out maybe slightly a bit somewhere around here let's say around 20 as well um, really these are like different effects that you can apply to the image so let's experiment with them a little bit if you don't like something just set it back to this zero value this is like this posterize effect not really interested in that pixelating I'm not really interested in mosaic I'm not really interested but again you need to go and experiment depends on the type of image you're trying to create right what are you trying to create that's most important so we'll go ahead and click apply here and then we'll go to the um, effects option here effects so here you get all these different types of effects you can go to like these sort of old grayscale type sort of images if you don't like that you can click uh, cancel here and it will cancel that you can click effects again and we can experiment with these we've got colored ones so you can apply colors this makes some quite interesting stuff and you can change the amount of color that's applied right so it doesn't have to be a hundred percent it can be a smaller amount you can just click on these and see which ones kind of uh, work for you right and it's all about experimenting there is no correct or incorrect it's about playing around with the tool and seeing what works we'll click the back button here I really don't want to go this we can click the plus remove effect don't really want that effect let's try retro and let's see if we can find something so I quite like this one It's called rag warm I think that gives quite a nice sort of effect you can see like the before and the after and I quite like how it's adding that sort of warm element to the image because we've got these sort of stars and stuff going on in the background I think that works pretty well so I'm going to click apply and now we've got the image looking like this and you've got some other options here you've got um, liquify options so liquify is really about manipulating the image so if I were to increase the size here you know sometimes in Photoshop people change people's waist size and like make their eyes bigger and like take edge stuff like this so you can like click here on the left hand side and drag in here you can manipulate people's waist and stuff like that I'm not really going to play around with this tool too much but you kind of get the idea you can play around with um, liquefying the shape of the arms and stuff like this it's really kind of beyond the this particular tutorial so really what I want to do if you don't like something that you've applied to it just click the undo button so we undo it once twice just click clicking the undo until the image is back to its original shape but that's like the liquify tool I'll leave you to go and experiment with it because it's quite a complex tool maybe I'll do a tutorial just looking at that particular tool I'm not interested in that in this particular tutorial so we'll close that here you've got like the retouch tool so this is things like the stamp tool so if you want to clone a part of an image and apply it somewhere else or you want to fix like skin and stuff like that and remove like freckles or blemishes or scars you can use the the clone tools and the tools in here to do that again that's probably a bit beyond this particular tutorial um, so here you can just draw so if you want to just draw on a canvas um, you can actually click the plus sign and you can click uh, empty when you click empty it's an empty layer right so when you start drawing you can actually hide the layer or, or show it uh, rather than drawing directly on that picture you want to draw it on in in its own layer i think that's quite important that you draw on layers right get used to using layers i think that's quite important here you can just use this this button here to move where that particular layer sits or you can just drag it as well you can do the same thing so i'm going to hide this layer i don't really want that in the final image um, you've got like an erase tool here as well you've got a pen tool you've got a shape tool so you've got quite a few things I'll leave you to experiment with the draw tool 
Uh, maybe you want to create something for social media, you want to draw in there, you can do that. And here you've got the text tool. So when you click text tool and you click add new text, it will automatically add a layer. And in here, maybe we'll type in something like, uh, let's just type in, I don't know, uh, let's do something like retro 2020, right? We're almost in 2020 now, believe it or not. So let's select that text. You can see it's quite small and we'll increase its size. So let's make it a lot bigger, something like this. You can click here. Let's just do that again. You can click on the font option here. You can set alignments here as well. Um, you can set it to uppercase or lowercase if you want to do that. This is the text that's actually written. So you can click in here and change it or you can type it in here. And you can change the color. So you can change it to like a red color, maybe something quite strong. And then we can click in here and change the font. So here you can see all the different font styles that you can play around with. Um, you know, you can make some quite interesting text elements. Something like this looks quite retro, right? This sort of font. You can grab the handles from the side and drag them out to get the, the text fitting a bit better. So if you drag it more in, it's gonna sit on two lines. If you want it on one line, you need to drag out like this. And then you can change the size here, right? Let's just make it a bit smaller. And then you can play around with, line spacing is really when the text is on two different layers, or you know it's on two layers. So if we were to drag down and get it onto two layers, then we can change the line spacing here, you can see. You can change the line spacing. Because this sits on one layer, we don't really need to do that, so we can reset it. Uh, letter spacing, we can space out the text a little bit more. It's a bit cramped. So maybe we set it to something like 20, around 20. Let's get it on 20, something like that. Or you can type the number in here as well, right? If you don't like that, you can click the reset, but let's set it to 20. Then you can add a background color to the text. So if you wanna have a strong background color, you can do that. I'm gonna turn that off, I don't want that. You can add an outline, which is a really useful tool. So if you want to highlight something quite clear, you can put an outline around it. Normally outlines, a black sort of color will stick out quite strong, but I don't really want an outline. So we can leave that there, but just turn it off. You can just turn it off and on now, right? And experiment with it. Maybe we'll put a drop shadow. So let's just, uh, let's see. So if you turn on the drop shadow, turn it on. Here you've got the blur effect. So if you set it all the way down, you will see the drop shadow a bit more clearly. Let's zoom in a little bit here um, to around here. And here you can see the drop shadow around the edge. Normally you blur that out a bit, something around here. You can change its position. Now you can see you can change its vertical and change its horizontal position. So you don't have to and really like, obviously shadows is about lighting, right? So really the light source will be over here somewhere coming in at an angle. That's why you see the drop shadow on this side. And you can play around with that. You can tighten it up a little bit. It's a very powerful tool, right? You can, you can do exactly what you want. You can change its opacity as well. The shadow opacity. And you can change its color. So there's a, you know, there's a lot of options in here. You can change the drop shadow color as well. Maybe we'll set it to like a very dark blue, something around here. Okay. So let's um, let's see, do we want that drop shadow? We can leave that there. We'll click the close button and now you can see the text here. We wanna move this text. So let's make sure we click on that layer, go to the move tool, arrange, and let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the full canvas. We can drag that. And if you drag it to a certain position, it will snap to the middle. We see this vertical line up here. Maybe we drag it up a little bit more and we can then left click outside and we can see what that looks like. Really the text, I didn't really want that to be there to be fair. I just wanted to show you how to use it so we can click on that layer and just hide it. We don't have to show it. So this is really the kind of end image that I wanted. This is what I wanted to try and show you. So let's click the save button down here. There's a few other options I'll quickly show you. You can click this to hide the or hide or expand this, um, this, this layer stack here. And it has kind of two options. You can have like a basic sort of layer view you can click it and close it, or you can click it one more time and see the namings here, the names, right? We can click here, and inside here you can change the language. You can also tell it to show guides and snap to guides, so you can create guides and show them or, or hide them in your artwork. And you can also change the interface, the color of the interface here. But I like to leave it dark. Let's click the Save button. Inside the Save button, you've got various options to save the artwork. Let's save it as a JPEG. We'll save it as high, so it's high compression. Here you can just click this and it will just really change this handle here. So 
So we'll leave it at high because we want to get a nice high quality image. We'll click the download button and it will automatically download that. Let's click the close. Let's go back to save again. And this time we'll click PNG and we'll save that as well because it's nice to have a nice high res PNG file as well. And we'll click the close button and we'll click save again. And the third option, this one, this one is actually a, uh, a file format that you can open again. So if you want to open up this file again using this particular software and show the layer stack and all of the elements, you can save it as this file type. So we'll go ahead and click download. And when we do that, it says if you selected a large file format, please wait a while uh, while we create this for you. So while it's doing that, let's press the F11 key and let's minimize. In fact, we'll drag this to the side. And what we do is drag these two images in here and we'll wait for that to create that file. Maybe it will do that in time. If it doesn't, then we'll just, maybe, maybe we'll look at that in a moment. Let's minimize this. Let's see what we ended up with. So here we've got a picture of this lady and then we'll open up the PNG. That should be a nice high res version. And here you can see what we've done, right? We've taken two different images. We've added some effects. We've manipulated the colors. So we've done quite a few things using this software. Remember, it's all free, it's online. So you don't need to download no software. You can do quite a lot of things. And we could add many more layers in this uh, this artwork. It didn't have to be just two layers. But I think we've done a pretty good job uh, considering we haven't spent a huge amount of time. And normally this would be a lot quicker process for me. But as I'm explaining things, obviously it takes a little bit longer to, uh, to explain everything. But I think overall, I think we've created some pretty cool artwork using this particular tool. So let's close this. Let's close this. We'll see if that file is ready yet. Probably not. That's going to take a bit of time. I'm not going to sit here, wait for that to uh, save. But in theory, once we save that last file, well, here it is, this X, uh, this PDX file. So let's try that. Let's drag and drop this into here. And it's called a PD, PX, PXD file. So it's a file format compatible with this particular website. Let's see actually what file size it came in at 18.5 meg, right? So what we can do now is, um, let's try this. So let's click close. We've closed the image. Let's actually, um, let's close this image. Let's go to open image and we'll select that particular file we just downloaded. This, uh, what is it called? It's called a PXD file. Let's click open and it says loading. So now it's taking all of the original information, the stuff that we uploaded. And here you can see, look, straight away, we're back on our original image. So it's a bit like saving a Photoshop file or a GIMP file. So we can retain all of the layers because the JPEG file and the PNG file won't have that information in there. But now we can go back in and we can click on the image and we can go back to maybe filters, click on this top image of this lady and we can maybe go back to effects. Let's see tunneling. We can go back and start experimenting and changing the picture again. We can add more effects to it, right? So it's quite interesting that we can do that. I think it's pretty awesome that they allow you to save an original make file so that we can go and open. And maybe you want to, maybe you come back and maybe you want to add some text to it. So you can just add your text. You can do certain things. So let's close down the browser. We've got the original files now. So we ended up with uh, this particular image. This was our end result. So I don't know what you think. Maybe you should go and create your own image, go and experiment. You don't have to use the same images. Maybe you can, when you're going through this tutorial, it'll be a good idea to use the same images, but then go and pick two different images and go back through this tutorial and see what sort of artwork that you can come up with. This might be nice for your sort of social media. Maybe you're promoting a product, right? Maybe you've got, I don't know, hair extension products or clothes shop or something like this. Um, maybe it's a contact lens company. Depends on what it is, right? What your business is doing. Or maybe you just want to, maybe it's a picture of yourself and you want to do something nice for your Facebook page or your Twitter page or whatever it might be. You just experiment and having a bit of fun. That's what graphic design should be. It should be fun, right? So let's close this. That's the end of this tutorial. Um, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, I've got over 500 video tutorials there, so you can go and experiment. A lot of them are about graphic design, but you've got 3D animation, you've got anything from spreadsheets, lots of different knowledge. I'm sharing all of my knowledge on YouTube, so come and subscribe to my channel. Check it out. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description as well. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.